This is a demonstration of deploying the DreamHouse mobile web application on Heroku and setting it up with Heroku Connect. I'm in the Git repo where I can see the instructions for this on GitHub. And to deploy it, I just need to click this Deploy to Heroku button. So I'll do that in another tab. And what this will do is walk me through deploying this application from GitHub to Heroku. So here we go, here's the application. I can specify a few things about it and I can see that Heroku Postgres is a default add-on. And that's what we'll use by default for persistence in this application. So it makes it super easy to deploy it. This is a Node.js application. So what it's gonna do is run the Node build on the application and it uses Ionic uh, for the UI because we took the source code from a mobile application and just made it work as a web application. So it takes a minute to run the build for this project to download the node dependencies and then run the build. Uh, once those dependencies are downloaded, they get cached so future builds do go faster. So while we wait a minute for that to finish, let me just walk you through a little bit of the source for the app so you get a feel for how it's structured. The package.json defines the dependencies and tells Heroku how to build it. It's gonna run gulp build, and gulp is what Ionic uses to build the application. You can see some different dependencies in here, like Angular and the Ionic stuff. You'll see Express is what we're using for the web framework, uh, gulp, PG to connect to the Postgres database. So that's that's our package.json. Our main server is defined here in server.js. You'll see that we're setting up a few things here, like the database connection. And uh, there's some checking here to see if we're using an environment variable, or if not, then we uh, assume that we're running locally. This environment variable is provided automatically when we create the Heroku Postgres add-on. So we connect up to Postgres. We check here to see if we're running against a instance of Postgres or a schema in Postgres that's provided when we use Heroku Connect. And if not, we um, we just assume we're we're running against a local Postgres or against a Postgres without Heroku Connect. And then you'll see there's some REST APIs that are just uh, essentially proxies to queries and updates on the Postgres database. And that's pretty much it for that app. So let's go check back and see if it's deployed. Looks like the build was successful and it's up and running. So let's go check it out. So here we go. Here's our app that we just deployed up and running on Heroku. It assigned a domain here. We could also of course point our own domain at this as well. And now we can go through and check out the application. Here's all the properties. You'll see that there's some data in here already and that's because the application knows that when there's no data it will automatically initialize a sample data set. So we can go through and check out the details of the house and see the brokers and that sort of thing. So so here's our, our mobile web app and you can see it's all working there on Heroku. So that's great. It was really easy to deploy and get this all up and running against Postgres. But if this data lives in Salesforce and we want to make Salesforce the, uh, the system of record for this type of data so that our realtors can use Salesforce to manage this data, then uh, we use Heroku Connect to synchronize that Salesforce data into that Postgres database. So let me walk through how we would set that up. So I've already installed, if we go over into Salesforce, I've already installed the DreamHouse app into my Salesforce org. So we can go through and see here's the properties and uh, the, the properties here in Salesforce with all the information there. So this is the data that we'd like to synchronize into Postgres on Heroku so that we can pull the data from Salesforce instead of from just a sample data set. So over in the Heroku dashboard, what I'm going to do is manage this app and then we'll see that there's a place where we can go configure add-ons. So what I want to do is add the Heroku Connect add-on. So we can just come in here and look for Connect and provision it. I'm going to use the demo edition that's free. And now um, that that's added to my application, we just need to go set up some mappings in this application. The mappings map tell Heroku Connect what fields to synchronize, what columns and fields to synchronize from Salesforce. 
So I'm going to first set up a connection and tell it, yep, our schema is Salesforce, and it's going to use the, the Postgres database that I've already configured for this application. And then I'm going to authorize Salesforce to make API calls on my behalf. So that's OAuth there. And now we can create our mappings. So let's create a mapping. And I'm going to map three different objects in Salesforce. So the first one is going to be property underscore underscore C. In the fields, uh, before I get to the fields, let's say, yep, we want to listen on real time for changes, uh, to propagate changes from Salesforce to the database. And then from the database changes to Salesforce, let's just write those back. We can configure those depending on our use case. And now I'm going to select the fields. So we'll go through and select just all of the custom fields that I need here. So I'll do all the fields except for these image ones. We don't need those. And so I'll just keep going through and skip that image one as well and then hit save. So now uh, Heroku Connect will, will begin configuring the mapping and loading the data that we have in Salesforce into Postgres. And let's do the same thing for the brokers. So I can say broker and now again, yep, let's listen, let's write changes back, and let's select our custom fields. Skipping the uh, image one, and save. So again, that will synchronize, and we'll do the final one, which is favorites. So now we can have the users able to specify their favorites, and that data will, will be propagated back to Salesforce. We'll select the property and user columns there. Okay, so now that we've got our mappings set up and the data all configured, that all looks great. You may have noticed in my app, what I do is on startup, I check to see if Heroku Connect has been configured. And because I've changed that the, uh, the mappings after a restart, uh, I just need to go and restart the app now. And now this time when it starts up, it'll see that I'm using Heroku Connect and we'll pull that data from Heroku Connect instead of from that demo database. So that should be up and running, but let's go check out the logs here and make sure. So yep, looks like it was restarted and is, is up and running. So now we can go reload this application and if I go into properties, we'll actually see the same thing, but that's good. But now the data is coming from Salesforce. And to prove that, let's go find a property and make a change to like the price and then verify that it shows up in here. So um, we're going to make a change to uh, this 78 Brattle Street, which is 450,000. So that one is this one here, I believe, the Seaport District one. And you can see the price there. Let's go, oh, nope, that was not the right one. Let's go back. There must be another one that's 750,000. There it is, city. Oh, there's three that are 750,000. Let's see if it's this one. Nope, not that one. Third time's a charm. Here we go, five bedrooms, four baths, 450,000. That is our 48 Brattle Street property. So now let's go edit the price and this one is uh, really hot, so let's up the price by 100,000. Save that, and now Heroku Connect will see that there was a change there, and will synchronize that change out to the Postgres database. We can go in and see that information, see the synchronization happen in the Heroku Connect dashboard. And then if we reload this application, this was the, uh, let's go back here to properties. And now you can see that heart of Harvard Square has gone up from 450,000 to 550,000. And that was because we made the change in Salesforce, that change synchronized to the Postgres database. So now the next time we did that database query, we got the updated record. So that's how we set up Heroku Connect with the DreamHouse application. Thanks for watching.